water dog is the best kind of dog. That's a duck dog. Richard Walters coined that phrase 30, 40 years ago. I mean, to me, that's that's duck dog. I mean, water dog is duck dog, and, and I'm a little bit jaded, but water dog means Labrador to me. There's just nothing finer than a, a well-trained water dog. A dog that sits beside you and, and marks the birds and, and you look at the intensity on their face and you know that they are like having so much fun and they love it so much. It's, it's just, they're in heaven. I mean, that's their heaven. And that's what a water dog is. I don't think I was any different than any college kid growing up. I went to school at the University of Arkansas, and of course, duck hunting in the outdoors, just like every other kid in the rural south, outdoors is a huge part of your life. Going to school at, at the University of Arkansas just pushed it even farther. Everybody that goes to school there is big into ducks and dogs, and in Arkansas, it, it's a way of life. Regardless of where you grow up, if you're a duck hunter, you hear about Stuttgart in East Arkansas and, and, and all the tradition and heritage there. And, and so I was no different than anybody else. I mean, I, I dreamed of, of being able to go over there, but dreamed of always being able to go over there and hunt. And the way I got started guiding was my dad had a, a private duck club in Southwest Arkansas on the Pine Creek bottoms of uh, close to a little town called Horatio. And, and as he developed this place and, and, and they hunted there, they, they started to, to, to buy more property. So they needed investors to buy more property for this thing and they, they needed somebody to, to take them. So I was 17, 18 years old and started taking these guys. And, and after a while, these guys would come back because of this, this dog I had. And we ran hunt tests and, and field trials and, and all that stuff. That's where the whole deal changed for me. In your lifetime, you're lucky to have one good dog. And, and that, that great dog that I had was Lucy. We grew up together. I mean, literally found out about life together. I mean, I got her when I was 17 years old and we just, we grew up together. Nobody had an influence over me like, like Lucy did. Here. The thing about a dog that, that makes it so special is, and, and everybody who has one is, is no different, I'm sure, that it increases your time out there by 100%. You can knock one duck down and it can be 150, 200 yards off and it may be the toughest blind retreat you've ever seen and your dog picks it up and it doesn't matter if you shoot another duck all season because to a dog guy that's the coolest thing that can happen. It doesn't matter that 600 ducks came into the decoys in the timber or whatever amazing sight that you saw that will be the coolest thing that you'll always remember. And I've got 50 of those that'll be with me forever because of that dog.
like I said, when you get lucky enough to have one good dog, and some people get lucky enough to have a great dog, and I just don't mean a great dog based on what they can do in the field or their talent level as a retriever or whatever, but, but I've been lucky enough to have two, one great dog and one good dog who's going to be great. Um, Yella is a litter that I waited on for a couple years. She is a, uh, a distant relative. She's probably Lucy's great, great, great granddaughter. Now, Yella's problem has always been control. And so that's something we continually fight. She's just, she is an absolute maniac all the time. Just wild. But as far as marking something, everything that, that, that God gives a retriever to come here with, she's got tons of it. I mean, she just, she has more drive than she's supposed to. She, she can mark as good or better than any dog I've ever seen. And, and she just has a lot of talent. We got three hours left in our South Dakota hunt this year. Let's go get them, Chief. Coming off that mountain and going down there was the first time. It's Yellow's first season. She hunted uh, probably 15 or 20 days in the first year. It's the first time that I had hunted by myself in a long time. It's the first time that I've hunted in 15 years with another dog by myself. And so it felt really funny coming off that mountain and, and going down into that, that little hole. It kind of felt like I was almost cheating. I had an uneasy feeling about the whole situation. And it, it just brought back all those memories that, you know, tramping around through every creek and every hole. And, you know, it didn't matter what was in season. I mean. I mean, I took that dog deer hunting, not because I really thought he'd help me kill a deer, just because I didn't want to leave her. You don't realize how tight you become, you know. It's, it's not better or worse than a relationship you have with anybody else in your family or another loved one. It's just much more intimate. I mean, people say it all the time. I mean, no matter what happens, your dog loves you. They didn't see something, babe. Here they come right there, baby. Get ready. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Watch him. Here they come. Go, baby, go. Here we go. Get him, girl, get him. Oh, good girl. Good girl, Yella. Help us Here. What in the world is that duck? Here, baby, right here. Come here. Here, come here. Come on, we gotta hurry. Duck's down. Hurry, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, come on, yep, good, good. Where's your mark, where's your mark, where's your mark? Yep! All right, come on, babe, get out there and find it. I don't know where that duck is, I think he might have dove. Come on, baby. Well, there was a big front coming in, so we, we were hoping that we were going to see some new ducks. And uh, we got in there, and it was this beautiful lake called Hoop Lake uh, in northeastern South Dakota. And, and uh, came down off this great big hill into this valley and this kind of this lowland wetland area, and tons of geese, and, and uh, just an incredible, incredible spot. It, it, it actually reminded me a lot of home. I didn't hit him as good as I thought I did. 
Rebel baby, stay in there and fight him. Find him out there, baby, find him. Man, what a big group of ducks. Golly, what a big group of ducks. Come on, baby. Keep looking, baby, keep looking. I can't help you. Get him, girl, get him. There he is, good girl. All right, baby. Ow, way to go, big dog. Good girl. Good girl, Yella. Nice work, babe. Good job, babe. Come in here. Nice, about 120 yard mark. Nice line. Good girl. Good girl. Good. That was a long mark, wasn't it? Come on. Kittle. Place. Place. Good girl. Here. Here. Yeah, good. Shake. Good. All right, babe. I know you know this is gonna be hard for you to believe. With this, look at me, I'm talking to you. Don't scare me like that. This is the hen mallard. That is the drake. Okay, I know it's hard for you to believe there's no green head, but this is how they shoot them in South Dakota. This is called Eclipse, and they're not in their breeding plumage yet. And he'll be beautiful. I know you don't believe me, but he will. He'll have a green head when we see him again in Arkansas. One of the things when you're up here this far north and uh, in northeastern South Dakota, and, and it's this early in the year, you know, the ducks haven't really, they haven't changed into the breeding plumage at all yet. Uh, there's a few resemblances of what's taking place with the, you know, the mallard drakes, their heads starting to turn green and, and those things. But what we really wanted to try to do is get those ducks on the water so we can take advantage of it, take the time to look at them, and then, and then shoot them on the way up so we can make sure that we, sh we shot almost all, all greenheads or all drakes. And, uh, and the wood ducks are already in full plumage and, and they're pretty easy to pick out, but the, the mallards are really difficult. So we gotta look for those, those yellow bills on the drakes and, and the orange bills on the hens because they, they just look almost identical. We didn't have as much luck as we wanted to because I, I can't call. But, but if I could have called, we could have actually got them on the water a little bit. Here we go, yellow. Here we go. Get ready, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Look at the ducks, baby. Look at the ducks. Here comes one in the hole right here. Here comes one in the hole. Two in the hole. Good girl, Yella, good girl. Come in here, baby. Go Drake. Here. Here. Good girl. That thing's big as a goose, isn't it? Good girl. Give it. God, give. Give. Look at those legs, Yella. He is brand new. Came in on the front. Look at those new legs. See y'all? There's two theories behind these 
orange, bright orange legs. One is, these are new ducks and they've been flying all the way down from Canada and they haven't been feeding and they had not been in the mud. Their other theory is, and I think this is probably the true theory, is the endorphins from the exercise is putting all the blood flow in these legs and that's why that's why they're this color, they're so bright. But we know those ducks have been flying a long time, regardless of what it is. So we got some new ducks. Watch him, here he comes. Watch him, watch him. Here they come, here they come. Watch him, babe, watch him. See it. That wind's tough on them. They can't get in here with that wind like that. <laughs> we'll get the next big group, I promise. Sit, hold, hold. Mark, Mark, get your mark. Look, look, good. Give, yeah, good, good. Shake. Eight weeks old. Eight weeks old, 25 yard retrieve with a full size dummy. Over land, back in the water, and returning nicely to hand. Look at the little dog carry the big duck. <laughs> when Yellow was eight weeks and a day old, I was out training, a friend of mine, getting his dog ready for a trial that, that was going on that weekend. We were working on long, cheating singles, and, and the, the older dog did not see one of the marching. We were kind of doing a little hup hup to get the dog there. I looked out of the corner of my eye, and Yella is rambling off the bank at 90 miles an hour. Big water entry, land water, picks it up, comes back with a full, full size duck. And, and when that happens, you know you've gotten lucky, you've got something to work with, and, and if it doesn't work out, then you got nobody to blame but yourself. You see those cows over there? They're not very smart. They're not nearly as smart as Labrador. I know you'll learn that over the next few years, but uh, they're not very smart. I think you're starting to get where you pick out these ducks. You don't seem to pay attention to a, uh, a sparrow near as long as you did last year. Sit, sit. Sit, sit. Hang on, babe. She's really developing yep. as a hunter, and, and she's kind of understanding what's going on. And, and uh, you know, she did a wonderful thing yesterday that made me so proud. She, uh, she dive, yellow, dive. We had a duck down, and that duck was crippled, down, and it was diving on her. And she stayed in the area and hunted and dove a few Thank times, you, but uh, hadn't been able to, to dig that one out yet. And uh, about that time, a wood duck drake came flying in there out of nowhere. Oh my God! There's a limit. Shot him. No, nope, no. Nope. He fell dead. And her immediate reaction was to pull off of that duck. 
the one that she was the diving duck and, and go after that wood duck. Uh, I stopped her once, cast her back into the area. She dove down, got the mallard, came on back, remembered her mark, picked it up. So I mean, that was that was, that was really a, a she showed a lot of control right there. And, and uh, you know, she has just about as much drive as I guess you could ever get. And and uh, it's it's really neat to see something love something so much. Uh, it's. 35 degrees, we probably had 30 mile an hour winds. I know she was cold. I mean, I was freezing to death, and I know she was cold. And uh, she had about a, I mean, it was a bird that she marked down, and it was probably 100, 110 yards. And I mean, the whole time she's out there, after making that, that swim through the water, I mean, the tail is just wagging the whole time. And it's, it's just, it's a real kick to, to see something that just, she just loves that so much. And. Uh, I, I just can't imagine liking anything that much, you know, and it's just, you can see how much fun she's having. As long as she's going and, and, and she's, she's got an opportunity to pick something up, she's having a good time. She really likes to sit, too, for a long period of time. She loves that. Good girl. Good girl. Nice. Good girl. Yeah, good. They're going to write books about you one day. Come on, let's go home and get something to eat. Come on. Here. Good girl. This mud is so much fun. <laughs>